Hey guys, it's May May and welcome to another Scripture Art Journal Week. And this week, I want us to focus on giving. The scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 6, all the way through 15. Um, you can choose the same scripture I chose, or you can choose a portion of it, or you may want to do a different scripture based on um, your view of giving scripturally. The reason I wanted to do this this week is because after I saw Hurricane Harvey come through, and I know there were terrible, terrible news media stories coming out from that, not so much about the devastation. We know the devastation was terrible, but the news media can sometimes pick on things that are just negative in any situation. And rarely did they focus on the good things that were happening and the people that are helping still to this day and will continue to help. There are so many organizations doing amazing things. And I was so, I guess, just charmed by the fact that people give. It is in us. It is in our nature. And the thing I love about it is God loves a cheerful giver. He loves when we give because we want to, not because we feel obligated. Scripture even says that. I'm going to read the scripture real quick. Um, the point is, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he is distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgiving to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. And I just feel like this is a perfect picture of what the people have done in Texas, around Texas, in Louisiana, in the other states that are affected. There are so many people giving just out of the kindness of their heart. And it makes me so proud. I can't imagine how God feels about how proud he is of all of the people that have just given of themselves and of their time and made things happen for people that need all the help they can get at this time. So what I would like for you to focus on this week is giving. How can you give? Where can you give? Not out of compulsion. We just heard this in the scripture. Not out of feeling that you have to give. But how can you give? Now, you might think monetarily. And if you can, do that. You might think through supplies. And if you can, do that. But I know some of you listening to this today feel helpless and feel like you can't do anything. But as a believer, you can give of your time. And you can focus on prayer for those people who need you to go to the throne for them and ask for help. I know you may be far away from the area. You may not be directly affected by what was going on, but you can pray for them. The saddest thing I heard this week was where somebody said, don't pray for anyone. Do something tangible. And I thought, you have no idea the power of prayer. Prayer has never affected your life. You have never seen what God can do when his people pray. And so don't feel like you can't give. You can cheerfully give of your time to take time out of your day to stop what you're doing and pray for those affected and pray for those who are giving the help and pray for those who are taking the supplies. Pray for those people who are working around the clock to make things come as back to normal as they possibly can in that area and to save people who are in need. This week, I just really hope you can focus on giving. It just really touched me whenever I would see stories of people doing things out of the kindness of their heart. I'm a person who's experienced not a hurricane, not um, my home was not taken from terrible weather. The home was taken from a fire. And I remember the people helping me just because they wanted to, just because they had a desire to try to make me feel better. And I personally feel that anytime you lose your home from something like a storm or a tornado, I think it's worse than a fire. This is what I've always told people, because at least I knew where my things were. And when you're in a situation where things either blow away or float away and you don't even know where your items are, I can't imagine how that must feel. 
So be praying for those people and what they're dealing with in the destruction. Be praying for a way you can give and how you can be helpful, even if it's not just through prayer. Maybe you can get out there and do something. I didn't really plan for this whole uh, this whole video to be about uh, the Hurricane Harvey situation, but it's a good example. It's not the only example of places people need us in our communities and need us in our area. Think about ways in your own community you can help. It may There's so many people who experience devastation and destruction every day, sometimes just in their home life and their family life. Just think where you can be a blessing, but do it with a cheerful heart. It's, it's just, it doesn't mean the same when you feel like you're doing something begrudgingly, when you feel like you just have to do it. Find the ways to, to get a reward from it yourself as well as being a blessing for other people. So that's pretty much it. You can see here what I did for my page. I wanted to focus on the word give. I took a piece of scrapbook paper that already had wood grain on it. I had some fun fussy cutting some letters. Um, I just sat down and took some time to really focus on the scripture and what it meant to me. I used some ink in the background, another stamp set. I wanted to give some dimension with the kind of the distressed look of that stamp set. Um, and then just glued these letters into place. I enjoyed taking the time just to focus on giving and to think about, you know, where I could give and what I could do. I try my best to give as much as I can, and I feel like I'm a cheerful giver, and I feel like I um, I love to help people and be and be a blessing. So I think this is kind of an easy one for me. I know that sounds probably not not normal for everyone, but I love to give. I love to see where I can help. So I hope that you'll be inspired this week to do that as well. You'll see here that when I glue this in, I focused my scripture on 2 Corinthians um, 9-7 that you can focus on, whichever part of that speaks to you or any other verse in the Bible that speaks to you. So that's our scripture art journal for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will really focus on what the people are going through and not just not just in Texas, everywhere, just wherever you can be a blessing. Thanks so much for watching this week. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.